hello everyone this is Kenny Brony from Cambridge Tech and welcome back now in the last videos we've looked at our database our database models and relationships of that sort we've also made mention of the user model now it is with the user model that takes care of the user that we created or the users that we create so in this video we are going to learn how we are going to build our interface where we can create users from our interface so that it will be saved in our database now, in order to do that i realized a little um problem with our interface not necessarily a problem but then we need to fix things up now when we go into our interface and let's go to our templates what i want to do now is i want to go into partials no not necessarily i want to go into I want to go into partials and inside base.html. I want to get rid of or not necessarily get rid, but then cut this top nav over here. So I don't want the top nav here. So if I'm to refresh clearly, this is the top nav. Top nav is going to um go away. Alright. So we don't see top nav over here. Now where I want top nav is actually I want top nav to be cited in the template itself so what i'm going to do is right over here i'm going to paste top nav inside our block content just above the graph so when i save this and come back here we can see that we have top nav being displayed over here now i'll do same for the others so i'll come to order.html and come and paste the top nav over here i'll come to products and come and paste the top nav over here and i'll certainly come to staff and also paste the top nav right above the table so clearly i mean really nothing so much has changed we just changed the position of the top now not necessarily the position but then where it is as far as um, our design is concerned so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new application and or a new app so i'm going to run python and i'm going to say manage we've done this before so manage.py and i'll say start app and i'll give it a name and this time around i'm going to call this user so now as you can see we have the user app created over here with the same files that we had as far as desktop or dashboard is concerned now the obvious thing to do is to go to our inventory project folder go to settings.py and go and register this app all right so you come to registered app and we once again just as we did for dashboard we have user dot apps dot capital user config okay so it is pretty much the same as far as the format is concerned all right so we have our user registered all right so with the registration done i think i need to close settings.py now and close the rest of the template i'm not using or i'm not working with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create let me collapse this to so inside our templates i'm going to create another folder and i'm going to call this user so as far as the design and the structure of whatever projects that i build is concerned is the fact that every project or every app should have a folder of its own so that i will render all the templates of that particular app in that particular folder so clearly as you can see over here we have an app called dashboard and that's why i had the dashboard folder and the dashboard folder is rendering or handling all the templates that has to do with the dashboard now this app folder is also going to handle all the templates that has to do with the user so over here i'm going to create in a file and uh, i'm going to create in three files i'll call this login.html then i'll create another one logout.html then i'll create another one i'll call register.html but clearly the register that we are going to work on now so i'll create i'll close these ones up we are going to work with them soon so as far as building a template is concerned remember we are creating a user registration system okay 
So what I can do is, as far as the user registration is concerned, yes, I also want to extend. So I'll do extend. And where do I want to extend from? I want to extend from partials like we did with the others and we want to grab base.html. All right, so this is just for the template. And once you do this, we grab base.html. Now, what I want to do is I want to create in some view over here. So I'll do a def and I'll call this register. So register is going to take in a request. And as far as this request goes, it's going to return render and the first parameter we pass in here is request then the name of the template so the name of the template per my design then i have it in the user folder i just created for a slash and i'll call in register.html all right so i'll save this we are almost done but then the next obvious thing is we need to create some routing for it okay now as far as this routing is concerned i just want us to have a feel of how we can do other things so remember when we created our dashboard we created an internal urls.py to handle the routing for us okay now we can as well and this is what i said we can as well come in here into the project uh, folder which is inventory project and come into the urls.py which is supposed to do the original routing and do the routing here all right so in order to do that we are going to import this view over here because the routing has to do with the views i mean the views work hand in hand with the routing so what i can do is i can say from the folder user i want to import the views in there as user view and this user view will now be like a variable representing the views in here and i just want to be descriptive over here so since this is a list, I can put out the trailing comma over here and call this path over here. Then what do I want to see? Now, if I see anything dot register, okay, where slash register, then I want to call this user view dot the register function in there. And once again, I'll give it a name. So as far as the name is concerned, it's going to be user dash register. And this is just by following I mean the convention I have for myself as far as creating applications are concerned. So once again, I'll leave a trailing comma over here, and we are good to go. So if I should come back into our projects and do a forward slash register, you can see that we have this route working. Okay, we have forward slash register working. So we just have to now build the template properly. So what I can do is I can bring out the block, the block title over here. Then I'll say register page. I'll say end block. And that's exactly what you have over here, register page. So now you are going to build a registration form over here. So for the registration form, inside our block content, so I'm going to say block content, and down over here, I'll do end block. So inside the block content, I can now put in some HTML tags over here. So first of all, I'm going to call the container class. And sorry, we have to build this from scratch. So I'm going to call the container class and I'm just going to have a row and I'm going to say call MD6. So with call MD6, now I can have, I can call in the class border. Then with a class board, I want a pattern of three around it. Then I'll put this in an H3 tag. I'll say registration. So registration page. And what I need to do is I need to pass in 
or i need to bring out the form html tag and i'll bring in a method of posts because we want to post data over here then i think yeah so let's see exactly how this will look like over here so it says invalid block um so end block over here okay so it said invalid block tag on line 16 so this is what you wrote but it was expecting end block over here so this is just a typo and on line 16 that's what we have over here so i need to bring the d over here so when i refresh okay we have this registration page um sitting somewhere what i can do is i can give this a background of white and what i would want to do is i want to do i want to kind of center this okay in the middle so i'll do an offset and i'll do md3 let me try this and see i'm not too sure about this but let me try this and see okay so this is kind of centered in the middle because i've offsetted it like three as far as the demarcation is concerned then i would want to have a margin top of five over here then finally i want to have a horizontal rule down here so if i should come back and come and refresh yeah this is almost what we want all right then inside the form i'm finally going to have um, an input of type submit and the value is going to be register then I'll add in some bootstrap classes over here. So I'll do BT and BT and I'll do success. So I'll save this and I think this will give us a button over here. All right, so now the question is, where are we going to get a form from? Okay, let me change this to capital P. So as far as creating or registering our users are concerned, I come at the very top over here and I'm going to say or I'm going to run some import so I'm going to do from Django dot contrib dot auth dot forms I want to import and I'm going to import user creation form so this user creation form is something Django gives us as far as creating users are concerned so we don't have to reinvent the wheel and these are some of the reasons why you will need a framework like Django in building web applications so what I can do is there are some things I can pass in here which I haven't talked about so we can say we can call in a variable form and form is going to be the user creation form like this and what I can do is I can pass in a dictionary okay so the dictionary is going to be a key value pair I can pass in form over here as the key and the value is going to be this form we just created so when i save this now what this line of code simply means is this form that i claim to have created by just importing this okay as we have over here is going to be accessible in the register.html and that's what we have over here now this form once again is some kind of data okay so if it is data then there's a way we we represent data as far as template tags are concerned so if i am to do a double opening and closing curly braces and do form as we specified for the name of the variable over here just by doing this if i should go into my my interface and refresh we are going to see that we have some kind of form over here and like i said this is the form that's Django gave us okay so we didn't have to write a whole lot of code for it okay now this as it is or as it stands is not going to work properly I mean it's not going to work so we need to put in some logic and in order to do that let's just do it um, the proper way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a context over here and this context is going to be sorry this context is going to be a dictionary okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in form for the key and for the value is going to be form over here as well then instead of just writing this um, dictionary over here I can now pass in the context all right so 
passing this context is i mean almost the same as what i did now this, doing it this way is prudent and important because if you have a number of items you can just be passing them so comma you can just be passing them over here and you wouldn't have to come and change anything over here all right so this is still going to work i mean if i'm um, to refresh we are still going to have our form over here but then it looks a little bit creepy scattered and things of that sort we are going to work our way around it so now the question is how then do we register how then do we put data in our forms so far we haven't written any logic for it yet now let's come back here and i made mention of the fact that we have the method as post now as far as post is concerned we have two kinds of methods primarily we have the get method and the post method now the post method is considered more secure because you are putting something into the data and it, and it has to be carried in a secured manner we are using post so what i'm going to do as far as writing the logic is concerned is i'm going to come here and i'm going to say if request if request dot method is equal to post then we want to render this form out okay if request dot method is called to post we want to render this form out else i want to also render this form out but then we are going to see the differences very soon so the user creation form is still going to be rendered out but over here i'm going to pass in the request dot post so then what is the request of post the request of post is basically the username the password and the confirm password that we are going to type in here now the logic we've written so far is saying that if the request dot post okay or if the request of method is equal to post then create this form as we see in the templates and pass in that request dot post okay into the form else just leave it like that as we created it and that's what the else is trying to implement over here now we proceed to write more logic now you are going to say if form if form dot is underscore valid and there's actually a method and i'm going to explain what this does if form dot underscore valid now you are going to say form dot save so this is a save method that we can put over here all right so this makes our work very simple for us so clearly we have we are saying that if the request on method is equal to post then create a form using the user creation form and we are grabbing this request or method the username the password and everything we are trying to input over there grab it and if the form dot is valid now i want to save it now the form dot is valid is going to be invoked now as you can see over here you see that the username requires a character field okay so it has to be 150 character or fewer and it should i mean it can contain letters and things of that sort only okay so you can't put any special character except for these things that we have over here now it says that the password must be this so there are some validation that needs to be checked over here and that's exactly what the form.valid method is going to do for us so if the form dot is valid then we want to save the form else just render the form as it is now this is going to work okay to an extent so let's come back here come and refresh okay so now let's create in another user and i'm going to say brony and brony for password i'm going to type in a password over here and i'm going to repeat myself and when i click on register you are getting a problem and it says csrf verification field request aborted now csrf is a security feature django gives us so csrf actually stands for cross-site request forgery this is a security feature django gives us so in order to fix this we need to come over here and just before we render our form we need to pass in a csrf token so the csrf token will make sure that indeed this is sent in a secured manner so once again let me just clear this and go into our register routes so register and let's register once again so we have bruni and we have our password over here now when i click on register 
yes i mean what is happening now it actually got registered and the only way we can check this out is to come into a django admin dashboard okay from the back end and go to users and when we come to users we can see that we have bruni registered over here and the reason why we didn't see anything is because well we haven't asked our application to do anything now normally when you register on our application you would want to be redirected to a particular page and that's very important so you don't want to register and still stay on the registration page it does not make sense one way or the other so what we can do is we can actually inside django.shortcut.rend um, imports render there's another import we can do over here which is redirect okay so after saving we can redirect to a different page okay so we can do return redirect and where do we want to redirect to there are a couple of routes over here we can look at okay and this is actually going to take the url and not the template so as far as the url is concerned let's say you want to redirect to um let me come back here we want to redirect to let's say the dashboard dot index okay or the index page so let me copy this and if i'm to paste this over here and let's run in a new registration so let's register another user and this time around i'm going to register my dad who is bob roberts so my dad is going to have this password and i'll repeat the password here as well and immediately i click on register you can see that yes something has happened but the most important thing which i'm trying to demonstrate is we get redirected onto the index.html which we actually specified and if you go to the back end and come and refresh we can see that bob was indeed registered okay so one of the last things i would want to do is to actually come back over here and kind of style our form because our form looks a little bit disorganized and for this purpose we are going to use a third party package uh we call django crispy forms okay so django crispy forms is going to help us style our forms and it's going to make our work very simple for us so i already have it installed but then what you should be doing is to run this pip install django crispy forms if you don't have it already installed so what you can do is you can run this install uh, pip install django crispy forms now when i run this it's going to tell me i already have it installed and indeed i have so as you can see requirements already satisfied okay so i already have this installed and we just have to follow some three steps okay or less so we need to come to installed apps and put in this over there so i'll copy this and where do we find install apps install apps is going to be in our settings.py and that's where we've registered all our apps so far and this is installed apps so you come down here and put it over here so we tell django that yes there's something that we've installed that we want to use which is the django crispy forms then again we continue now the next step we need to do is to copy this and we'll go back into our settings.py once again and i mean paste this anywhere but i usually prefer to have it somewhere here now paste this so it says PSP template pack okay and what kind of template are you using as far as your styling is concerned now we are using bootstrap bootstrap 4 so we type in bootstrap 4 and the last but not the least we'll click on next and we need to copy this over here so this a template tag as you can see load PSP form tags and we put this on the templates we want to have this work for us so we are going to paste it over here just above the block content all right and the last thing we need to do is to come in here and apply a filter so for the filter we are going to say crispy all right so when i do crispy and that's all that i need to do when i come back to come and refresh you can see that 
our form is looking a little bit better i mean better than it used to be so this is going to be the end of this video now we've learned how to implement some logic as far as registration is concerned and we've clearly seen that right from the front end we can create a registration form and once we register it takes it into the database we didn't have to reinvent the wheel because we are using the django framework and django framework already has a user creation form package already for us so we just have to utilize it now in the next video you are going to see how we can modify and change some of the things we see over here we are also going to see how we create our login view and our logout view in the next video now if you find this video very interesting there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel kindly subscribe to cambio tech and don't forget to hit the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified also share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at cambio tech we say learn programming you can do it and also don't forget comment and ask any question that you seek clarification to thank you very much and goodbye